Um, I just uh, want to read a quick verse from the Bible real quick before we get started today. And you guys might have thought the uh, Bible if you want, but I'm going to be reading from uh, the King James Version. And uh, this is uh, Matthew 26, and this is verse 41. It's King James Version. Watch and pray as ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And this has actually been, I actually read this last night and saw this when I was doing, digging in the Bible, uh, getting more uh, content for today's lesson. And this really, please, I mean, this verse really like stuck with me. You guys, you guys can come in. You guys can come in. Take a seat. This, this verse really stuck with me. And. You know, God really kept, had this on my heart, and I was going through it and kept reading it over and over again. And I did multiple digging and research, and pretty much today's lesson is uh, how to stay connected to the Lord. Uh, two weeks ago, Matt was talking about uh, having a relationship with God. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to stay connected. And I have four main um, topics. Today, I'm going to... Uh, probably only be able to cover two because they're just for the time but uh but i have prayer i have of course the bible the word of god um and there's other topics like the church the altar um things uh like that but um i think prayer and the bible is it was one of the two main important ones that we should really get down and lock in and anyways so I'm going to start with uh, prayer. So we, we all, sometimes we all have a problem with praying sometimes, you know. We don't pray as much as we should. Sometimes there's times that, you know, we feel guilty, so we pray. Or there's times that, you know, we do it just for show or, or just things like that. And, you know, I can even, you know, attest by myself. You know, there's been, there's been a couple times where, you know, I felt guilty. So, you know, I prayed or and things like that. But in the Bible, it, you know, it says that you should really pray, you know, uh, I have it actually right here in, in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Um, it says, be joyful, always pray at all times, be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants for your life in union with Jesus Christ. And he pretty much, you know, wants us to pray so you can be closer to him and have a prosperous life. And by doing so, God, it puts us in a place of blessing. It puts us in a place of, you know, ministry and, and, and just able to really hear from the Lord and really to be able to, to, you know, be close with him. And the Lord really wants us just to be happy and to share the gospel and to have a prosperous life. Amen. And by doing so, by praying, and by doing a steady, steady prayer, at least every day, it doesn't have to be, you know, like an hour or, you know, 30 minutes, but just a simple prayer that you say every morning. I, I pray myself every morning before I go to school, which is some simple, you know, stuff to pray for all you guys, and, and of course, let the Lord use me to minister to anyone in Annapolis. And, I prayed extra hard this morning because I was going to be speaking and, and I am a little nervous, not going to lie. So I, I did pray extra little hard this morning. But, you know, just praying every day and keeping a steady prayer will really bring you closer Emily to the Lord Harrigan, and really help, you know, your walk with him and how he will use you to impact others and, and uh, things like that. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to talk, uh, talk about... Uh, the Bible as well. The Bible is also a very big uh, part, very big key in, in having a relationship, a good, healthy relationship with the Lord. Because the Bible, that's literally His word, right? That, that's everything in the Bible is God's word. And by uh, reading the Bible, there was actually I want to I want to tell you guys of, uh, how my church, uh, a youth pastor, was preaching. This was a couple Sundays ago, but he was talking about. Um, if you were to read the Bible, and I was talking to Joshua about this yesterday, but he was, he was talking about like, uh, like 
we, we can't take the spiritual side out of the Bible, out of the Word. But if you were to use the Bible as a guide, and like for all areas in your life, all areas in your life, you know, you would have the best life. You would have a prosperous life because it is God's word. It is the way you are supposed to live according to God. And by doing doing this, I, I was really, you know, touched by that. I was like saying, wow, like God's word is so good and so amazing that even if you were to take, which you can't take the spiritual side, but even if you were just reading it, just to read it and, and just to, you know, just for your own just reading, it would you would still benefit and just because of the word that is God's word in the Bible. Amen. And I really uh really that really touched me. I also want to read uh from Hebrews four twelve. I'm gonna actually go to it. I wanna read two translations for you guys today. I'm gonna read first uh King James Version. I'm also gonna read the uh good news translation. Hebrews 4, uh, 12. And this is actually um, a verse that you hear a lot. I don't know if you guys, I'm, or Chris is already saying it, but this verse gets uh, said a lot. And, but I'm going to read the King James Version for you guys first. It says, For the word of God is, oh, me, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul. And spirit of the joints and marrow that is the, sin, the center of the thoughts and instincts of the heart. And I'm also going to read the, the Good News Version. Just uh, it's easier to understand, I guess. Sometimes the King James Version can be a little hard to understand at times. So I like to go through translations and, and find uh, a translation I can understand. That will be easier for all of you. Uh, the good, good News Translation uh, says, The Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts all the way through to where soul and spirit meet, to where joints and marrow come together. It judges the desires and thoughts of the heart. And this, what, it, what, the, what Hebrews 4.12 is pretty much saying is that, the God, that God's Word is living and active. It is powerful. And as we think about God's Word, our minds are renewed, and the decisions we make on a daily basis change. This can affect our emotions and actions when we make the right decisions based on the truth of God's word. We have the axis, or excuse me, we, we have the sense of peace and joy and delight. These contribute to a prosperous life according to God's word. And Hebrews 4.12 is, is really, really powerful first. You know, one of my top favorites uh, of uh, the, the many. I I think well, exactly what four twelve is saying. Hebrews four twelve is exactly what you know. The word and having a close relationship with God will do for you. It sets you, you know, straight. You will, you know, pretty much prosperous life. You would have a prosperous life, and. I just, you know, really believe that, you know, the Bible and praying, these two important topics, will help you have a closer connection with God and have a constant connection with the Lord and to pretty much, you know, pretty much all I have really much for today. And of course, there's other topics uh, like the church and the altar and things like that can also help you gain a closer connection with God and um, things like that. But thank you guys. Awesome job, Micah. Does anybody have any questions based off of that? That make that makes sense everybody as far as getting a closer relationship with God, getting a deeper relationship with God. There's one thing um, that one of my mentors said to me. And it, it, it spoke to me 
a lot because it helped me with, I always heard men of God and preachers and everything, and they would say like, oh, I was doing this and God spoke to me, or I was doing this and God talked to me, and I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, God doesn't talk to me, so like, there has to be something wrong with me. Like, how do you even know what God's voice sounds like? What if it's just my voice in my head, or like, am I just talking to myself? God, is it you talking to me? And I always struggled with that aspect of the relationship with me and God. And he told me two things. The first thing was I really questioned, well, is God actually going to talk to me? Well, here's the answer to that question. Does God love you? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. John 3, 6. There we go. Thank you. God loves us. So if you love somebody, isn't your, like, number one desire you just want to talk to them? Like, if there's somebody you love, there's no doubt that you want to talk to them. So you guys can throw away that question of, does God want to talk to you? He always wants to talk to you because he loves you. Now the second thing was, is he, like, how do I know if he's talking to me? How do I know what he sounds like? And this man, God, he looked at me, he basically, he told me a couple things. He said, first of all, the voice in your head, is it saying something that you would normally say? So the answer was no, most of the time. So it was crazy stuff that was being said, like, hey, I want you to go randomly pray to that person in the hallway. Or, hey, go talk to that person that has nobody talking to them, or hey, that kid's foot's broken, I want to heal his foot, I wouldn't say that to myself, God was saying that to me, and the second thing was, he said, start reading the Bible, and read the Old Testament, because guess what, the God of the Old Testament is the same God in the New Testament, and is the same God that's right now, so the way that he talked to people in the Old Testament, the way he talked to people in the New Testament, is a very similar way of how he will talk to you. So if you want examples of God speaking and what it seemed and what it was like when God spoke to them and when God spoke to Abraham and God spoke to Moses and Peter and Paul and all these people, you go in the word of God, you find it, and then you say, okay, so God does talk and he talks very clearly. The biggest thing though is I say, God, I want to hear you like I've never heard you before. And he said, if you want to hear me like you've never heard me before, cut out all the other noises, turn down all the other voices. And so you guys just have to find a place where you guys can just spend a little bit of time with God. No TV, no phone, no music, just you and God. And I guarantee you that you will hear him talk to you. Has anybody, and this is my last question before we wrap it up, but this was just, I was praying this morning, it was on my spirit, so I want to ask this question. Has anybody ever questioned, is God real? I'm raising my hand. Because I have that. Yeah. So how many people have the... How many people can explain why God's real? Go ahead. It has happened through my experiences in life. It's happened through your experiences in life. Not only does God work through people, but also God works in your head. Yes. For instance, one day I was I had a calling to this P7 from Micaiah. Micah. Micah. Yeah, good. Oh, good. So what happened was I was randomly listening to my music, just in English. Mm -hmm. He tapped on my shoulder and he told me about this place. Now normally, I could. I was confused. I was surprised that I was touched, and it was specifically me. But then I realized that God had a calling for me. That God works through people, and this is one of the prime example of this. Another example that really brought me to show that God is real is that my mother um, had two types of cancer before we came back to church. And by the time I came back to church and I got back with God again, they were all gone. Wow, that awesome. God has restored everything back in my life. That's I just awesome. want to say that. That's awesome. I just want to thank God every day for that. Dude, that is awesome. God is a healer, 100%. Asia, go ahead. Um, well, first, I definitely want to agree with you. I'm not sure what your name is, but yes, that's for sure. I agree that God is real through the miracles that he does in people's lives. I mean, for me, I can also attest to it because I was born not breathing, and I had a 1% chance of living, and, like, my parents, like, didn't think that, like, they were gonna, like, they didn't think that they were actually gonna have me and, like, have a chance to, like, have a daughter. Yeah. And so, every time my parents tell me this story, I'm just like, wait, what? It's crazy. Like, I mean, of course I don't remember it, but it's just, it continues to remind me, like, God does have a plan for my life. Yeah. But, yeah, so the fact that I was born not breathing, and then, like, ten seconds later, um, they heard a cry. And after my brother had, like, prayed over, like, Lord, please don't let the baby die, then I was, like, lost. So that was pretty amazing. And then um, the 
other thing I was just going to say is like, who is creation? I mean, I always look at it like, you can't have a creation without a painter. And I feel like God is the painter of this world. Like, he's the one who created the world, and he is, we are the creation. So we have to have somebody that creates this I 110% agree with those answers. Those are about as good of answers as you can get. And I want to help you guys real fast for when you have to talk to somebody that may say, well, science explains how there was a creation and science is the creator or whatever. Because there's so many people that do that. But, I mean, it's not the case. Or, or your answers are, are phenomenal. The answers are great. The easiest thing is, I want to ask you guys, can, how do you know that love is real? How do you know that love exists? Through actions. Through actions, you just know. But what's a big thing? You, you feel love. You can feel it, right? How do you know that wind, and how do you know that air is real? You can't see air. And you, you feel it, you breathe it, you can see you can see the wind when it interacts with the trees. But here's the coolest thing, is you know that air is real when you see what it touches. Because when it touches something, there's an instant reaction. So how do you know that God's real even though you can't see him? Because of what he touches. When God touches something or someone, it's immediately a, a reaction. When God touched you, you felt the reaction and you came here. When God called you back to church, he touched you and touched your mother, and there was a reaction, which was the healing. When God touched you, there was a breath and there was a cry when you were when you put life. When God touched the earth, there was a reaction. There was beauty made of it. When God touches you, there's a reaction. There is a reaction every time God touches something. So when somebody questions, well, I can't see God, you tell them, well, you can't see air either, but you can feel air and you can see what it touches. So you say, do you want to feel God? Because God will touch you right now. God will touch every single person in this place. If there's been somebody struggling with, well, I haven't felt God. People always talk about God, and I'm here because this is my last resort, because I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. God wants you guys to have an encounter with him. God wants you to be able to feel him, not just hear about him or anything like that. And I, I really believe that throughout this year, each and every one of you is going to have an encounter, have a moment with God. I had a moment with God at church on, on my face in the altar where God completely turned my life around. I had a moment in the backseat of my car when I was four years old listening to some Israel Holden song with tears falling down my face as God was touching me. That is what God wants to do for each and every person in this place. So I want to pray really fast and I believe that everybody in this place is going to feel God when we pray. And when you're done, you're going to leave, and you're going to have something right here. And it's like, man, God just did something. And when you feel that, I want you to connect with one of these P7 leaders, and I want you guys to say, whatever I just felt, I want to know more about it. And let's get in Bible study. So let's pray real quick. God, let your spirit fall in this place right now, God, so that every person in this place can feel you and can have a moment where they can feel you. In Jesus' name, God, let your... Spirit, fall in this place, God, and let every single person in this place that has been doubting, that has been questioning, let them feel your spirit right now. Let them feel your presence, God. Just like we feel wind when it blows against us, God, let there be a fresh wind of you blowing in this place. Let there be a fresh wind of you falling in this place. Let people feel your love and feel your joy and feel your peace right now. In Jesus' name, God, we are believing that, that every life will, will not stay the same, God, but every life will be changed, God. We are believing that people that have a broken home will go back to their home and it will be whole, God. People that are feeling depressed will be touched by you and that depression will leave. People that are feeling anxiety will be freed from it. In Jesus' name, God, stay with each and every person and touch each and every person's heart, God, and let them feel you and let them want to know more about you, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And thank you for being you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for coming. This was awesome. You guys are absolutely amazing. You just got the gun to go.